Well, we head to Argentina for today's focus report. And since Mauricio Macri took office last December, much has changed. In just a few months, the new president has made a clean break with the country's Kirchnerite past and popular left-wing model. He's now introduced a raft of new measures to kickstart Argentina's sluggish economy. And his new shock measures are already starting to take effect, not just in terms of the economy, but also by dividing Argentine society even further. Mathilde Guillaume, Julien Ferré and Patrick Lovett bring us today's Focus. A radical change of style in Argentina's politics. Since Mauricio Macri took office last December, he's been churning out one economic policy after another. His priorities reduce public spending and liberalize the economy. And one of the businesses that has been most favored by these new measures is the all-powerful agricultural sector. Farm owners had been in open conflict with the previous government, who had imposed severe taxes on commodities exports. With the end of the export taxes and the devaluation of the Argentine peso to its real value, hope is back. The money isn't yet in the bank, but it will come in with this year's crops and the next. Soon, we will start sowing again on lands we had abandoned. The new government is also keen on attracting foreign investors. They had steered well away from the country by fear of the unpredictability of Kirchner's Argentina. French winemaker Marc Zunino started his business here five years ago and nearly lost everything. These last years have been very complicated and things kept becoming harder and harder until the end of Kirchner's last mandate. We had problems with currency control, internal regulations, taxes. At one point, the more we sold, the more we lost money. Macri's presidency had an almost immediate impact on his line of business. Sales multiplied by three or four from the first week on. I have to admit that since December, we have sold as many bottles of wine as we have during the last two years of the previous government. But not all Argentinians are rejoicing over the country's U-turn. The brutal drop in subsidies to goods and services, gas, electricity, public transportation, caused a spectacular rise in household bills. Inflation, a never-recurring problem in Argentina's economy, is reaching new levels, striking the poorest in the country. In this slum in downtown Buenos Aires, Tapia has been seeing an increasing number of families attending a soup kitchen. You can definitely feel it very strongly because food prices have risen the most. It really is the most expensive thing now. These days, the women who come and help Tapia at the soup kitchen often stay for their own free meal. Are you missing anything, girls? Onions and pumpkins. They tell us that we have to be patient, that inflation will eventually drop. But how are we, the poor, supposed to survive meanwhile? Because now we're poor. Hey, I'm not crying because of Macri. It's the onions. <laughs> Lately, demonstrations and nationwide strikes against the government's policies have been very frequent. Just one day after the hospital workers, it's Argentina's public universities, professors and students which had taken the streets. The public sector is in the line of fire of Macri's government mass jobs cut plan. 21,000 state workers have already been laid off. Macri justified his move by arguing that the former Kirchner government had handed out way too many public jobs, an expensive way of boosting the employment rate. In every administration, there has been a purge based on ideology. And that persecution goes on afterwards for those who manage to keep their jobs. Layoffs quickly propagated to the private sector. In total, close to 140,000 jobs have been cut in the country during the past six months. We want to tell President Macri that the Argentines are still standing. The ideological gap separating Kirchner and Macri supporters widened drastically in the past month. Argentina's media outlets seem ever so biased toward the political figures they support. The Buenos Aires Herald, an English-language newspaper, is one of the few to remain independent. 
It is quite clear. Here you have Pagina 12, a left-wing newspaper very close to the former government. Its lead story is about yesterday's strike at the universities against Macri. And here you have Clarín, one of the most anti-Kirchner newspapers. Its lead story is about a case of corruption implicating the former president. In this one, they don't even mention the strike. Dozens of corruption investigations have indeed been launched against former President Kristina Kirchner and members of her cabinet, emphasizing the feeling of a so-called de-Kirchnerization of society. Argentina is changing at a rapid pace, raising hope for half the country and fear and anger for the other.